So today is the 7th of November, which means I probably haven't touched this experiment in two months. And as with any good software development project, we are <laughs> severely behind schedule. Which brings me to the actual project schedule for this whole experiment. Now, with anything that I do on this channel, what I try to do is I try to build projects where I have no idea whether I can actually implement them. I want to challenge myself, I want to do things that I'm not sure that they're actually going to work. So I have to divide the projects into proof of concept phases and implementation phases. Now, in this one here in particular, the implementation phase was actually very, very short. But the proof of concept stage was very long. Now, usually you want to see the opposite. The idea would be in the proof of concept phase to just build the first minimum viable product. So basically a prototype that can already do some of the things you want to do. And then when you're sure that you can achieve what you want to build, you actually go over into the implementation phase. Now, in my case, the things that I wasn't sure was pretty much all of the project, right? So in my proof of concept phase, I check whether I can generate CVs programmatically. We've done that whether I can web scrape jobs from Indeed that all have the quick apply filter, which we'll look into today. And as last step, I don't just have to generate the CVs programmatically, I also have to be able to upload them and apply programmatically, which we'll also look into in this video. So let's say all of this actually works and we're happy with our proof of concept phase. Now that does not mean that the whole project itself will be successful. There are now things to consider when going into the actual implementation phase. In my case here, it was an external factor that was quite hard to influence. Basically, I was scared of indeed blocking me. And there are two situations in which that can happen. The first one, which I thought was the more likely one, is when I'm actually scraping the jobs, meaning maybe after just like 100 jobs scraped, I'm already getting blocked by indeed. The other moment where I could get blocked by Indeed because I'm acting like a robot is when I actually apply to the jobs. This one is even scarier to me because it would mean I first scrape all the jobs and then maybe my account on Indeed is getting blocked, right? So Isabella's or Mateo's account could be deleted after 10, 20 applications. And that would really suck because my email address is connected to those accounts and it would mean that I went through all the trouble of scraping all the jobs without being able to actually go through with this experiment. Unfortunately, there's no way of figuring this out in advance. So today, you're gonna to see me try to web scrape from Indeed and also then apply to one of the jobs that I found there. Okay, so this is going to be the first run through of trying out whether my web scraper works generally as expected. Uh, I'm just going to run it all at once. But there's a browser now starting, and you can see it goes to de.indeed.com, automatically being forwarded from indeed.de. Now we should see the front end developer being put into the text field that happens now. And now we're finding the button clicking on it. And here we have the first page. And now this is going to take quite a bit of time because I'm basically, I'm now getting all the jobs. And when I have all the jobs, now we see it says going through all jobs on page one. Now, when I have all the jobs, I will go through them one by one. And each time we're going to wait for two seconds before moving on, just like as maybe more like a normal person would, um, would go through it. So now you can see here on the left hand side, for example, for all of the jobs, we're going one by one. Right now we're a deep sign GmbH, now this free front developer for, okay, we're going one by one, it's actually too fast when you talk through all of them. But this one here has easy apply, so this one should appear. And on the other side, you see that, you know, two jobs so far didn't have easy apply. So most of them actually do have it, which is really nice. Um, you also see that some of the jobs actually have a salary range, which I think would be nice to add in as an additional thing. But now comes the important part. Can we go to the next page? So that should happen now. We just scrolled that arrow into view and we're going to the next page and we just continue, which is beautiful. Actually, this is all I really need to see here. Um, another thing while this runs through is we can actually also check the CSV that is being written here. So we also see that we're, we're iterating here the page number, meaning that right now I have a CSV which is called developer DE1, but I should also, I'm not sure whether it already changed pages, 
but it should also write down um, it give me another CSV file for page two. So let's first check that the first CSV actually has all the data that we want. So if I open this with Excel, we get uh, we have a title and a location. Location might yeah might be quite messy data, um, but we do have the title here, which is beautiful. We have fourteen jobs in this file. Um, we have all the company names, and more, most importantly here, we have the URL, which is working just as expected. Maybe it's a bit small here on the screen, but here, if you look at it like this, um, perfect, absolutely perfect. And now if we go back, we should have the second page as well. There we go. And I think on page three, apparently right now, we have a bit of a bit of problems with a lot of jobs not having easy apply, but that is fine. So if I just reveal that one in the finder and look at that, amazing we had 14 jobs on the second page 13 jobs on the first page um, it's looking actually quite good so the next step now is just to make sure that i can also do this on the other pages without changing the code meaning for other countries so i'm going to go with indeed dot something else so what i'm going to do here is test this live um, I will, I will say I'm going to just do it for two pages this time just to make sure that I'm not immediately getting blocked. And now I'll change the driver get to indeed. Actually, I have the, I have the pages somewhere here. Here we go. So it should be NL indeed.com. So let's, let's try that one out. HTTPS NL indeed.com. So that should give me the Netherlands. So Let's run this again without the auto installer this time and Chrome has already started. So let's go. Ah, well, it, it will still start a new one. So I'm just going to close this win window I'm waiting for the new one. It will overwrite our current CSV file now because I haven't actually adjusted it for this. But other than that, let's see how it goes. So front end developer has been pasted. You see, I'm not doing anything, right? <laughs> this is all the, this is all the computer, rather my script, and we're on the first page, and so we see this one here doesn't have easy apply, but here the last one, so the last one that we see right now, front end developer at Semrush, if that one will give me, if that one ends up in a CSV file at the end of this page, we're going to be happy. So on the right hand side, you also see no quick apply possible for a given job, and now we shouldn't see that. There shouldn't be anyone at it. And that looks good. It took the data and it just went on to the next one. And now we see it again. So if I'm not wrong, the script that I wrote is going to work at least for the Dutch side as well, which is going to be very, um, it's already a very, very good sign for all the other sites. So we might actually be way, way quicker here than we thought. Very often when I say something like that, it will mean that probably something is going to go horribly wrong in a second. So let, let's see whether the button is also the same um, on the Dutch side as it is on the German side. It works and it's beautiful. We have Zemrush. That's perfect. That's the job we want. And that means unless indeed is blocking me at some point, which very likely is going to happen at some point, at least for now, I have the way to scrape all of those sites, go page to page, going page to page, and getting the jobs, which is amazing. Seriously amazing. I was really scared that none of this would work. Now, on top of that, I could have scraped, for example, the job description or the salary bands as well, but it wasn't actually as simple as I initially thought. So indeed, makes sure that you can't get all that data on just the first click. So I would have had to add a few more steps. And since this wasn't really at the core of the experiment that I wanted to do, I just decided to drop it and move on with the data that you see here on the Excel sheet. So the first thing that I had to do when trying to actually apply programmatically was to identify the quick apply button and then click it. I'm using the word programmatically a lot here and it basically just means that the code you can see on the right hand side, so my Python script, is used to do something in the browser. So in order for me to do that, to programmatically interact with the browser, I'm using a library here called Selenium, which makes it possible for me to just grab elements off the screen using Python and then also clicking on it, inputting data 
and so on and so forth. You've already actually seen this when I was web scraping and I came onto the Indeed website and I had to input the type of job I'm looking for. All of that was already done in Selenium. Now I just needed to do a few more advanced things to make this application process work in Selenium as well. For example, here, what I want to do is I want to find the quick apply button programmatically. So I'm scanning the whole site for a specific attribute on that button to find it. And then when I find it, I then just call a function, which is click that makes the browser think a user has just clicked on that button. When I got that done, I realized that in order to click on that button, you had to be registered and logged in. Now, I wanted to do this with Google because I already created a Google email account, but the authentication with Google requires quite a few steps in the browser. So what you have to do is you have to click on the Google button and it opens a new window. You have to switch it to that window, put in your email address, put in your password, go back to the original browser window and so on and so forth. And it was quite, it was one of the harder things that I had to do here in a programmatic way. Now, the thing is later on in the project, I figured out that that was completely unnecessary. I didn't need to log in with like programmatically. I could have just logged in and then started off my script. But actually, I think it, it was quite a good experience for me because I haven't worked with Selenium before, which is sort of the browser robot I'm using here um, to, to run through all of this. So after about 30 minutes of trial and error, I finally got it to work and here is the first working version of my script trying to log into Indeed completely automated. After logging in and then finding the quick apply button on each of the job descriptions, I then had to check out how I could run through the application process. And the way Indeed works is that they have multiple stages in the quick apply process. So you have to fill in all the info on a given stage and then you can click to continue. Or some stages are optional where you can just click on that button at the bottom. Which means that basically I just had to find that button on each of the pages and then try clicking it to get onto the next stage. Now, the stage I was most concerned about in that whole process was the upload CV stage. I originally thought that I would have to click on the button that says upload CV, then inside of the file browser, select the correct um, CV. But it turned out to actually be a lot easier. So what you can do is you can just select the input on the page and then in the same way that you would input, for example, your email address and an email input field, you could just input the file path of that CV, which makes it quite easy for me um, to upload my CV right here. So after figuring that out, I realized that I had a script with which I could click through the stages and upload a CV. So for some jobs, that might be enough to just apply. And that's what I tried. I gave it a test run. So I picked the first best job and it actually worked. It fucking worked and it was like 30 minutes of work. It was crazy. I mean, overall, I think I, I did a screen recording of the whole thing and overall there was like an hour long, but I even took like 15 minutes of a break and I thought this part of the project would be the most complicated, but it turned out that was actually quite easy for a one-off case. At this moment here, I'm actually contemplating whether I should send off the application, um, just realizing that this CV that, I'm, that I've uploaded just says some random address <laughs> and it's obviously a fake one. Uh, but at that moment, I just didn't care. I wanted to see that if I click that last button, I would actually apply. Um, and as you can see here, it worked because I even got the email confirmation into the Gmail account of Isabella, who was the profile that I used at that time. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of myself when I was getting all excited about managing to apply just through the script. So I actually had my fiance sit through another application with me to try and catch her reaction to it because I, I seriously thought this was the coolest thing ever. There we go, we just scroll down, continue button click. There we go. And then the beautiful thing here as well is this was literally the last step because now we just have to check. I don't even know what was number three. I would have to check on the video again. But look, now, the crazy, the great thing is also to send off the application. It's another continue button. So actually, 
I can now just run this again and look what's happening. Boom! Which is crazy. She's right. I hope I see you in the next one.